I will speak about uh, the little problem that uh, I encountered uh, recently. Uh, it's uh, uh, not really very important, and the solution is uh, not very difficult, but uh, uh, it uh, does involve a piece of uh, nice mathematics, uh, uh, and it's uh, related uh, in some way to, to Gödel's theorem, so uh, I wanted to um, share with you. Uh, so, uh, um, so I call the, the basic uh, notion of uh, an essentially undecidable theory. Uh, so the theory is essentially undecidable if uh, uh, all consistent extensions of the theory are undecidable, or uh, to put it uh, in another way, uh, no recursively axiomatizable extension of the theory is complete and consistent. And uh, uh, in practice, uh, if you want to verify that uh, a theory is essentially undecidable, uh, what we normally do is uh, we just check that it includes or maybe interprets uh, uh, some well-known uh, essentially undecidable uh, basic theory. So uh, usually the, the, this, this is basically the statement of the first uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem that if a theory includes or interprets uh, this and this minimal theory, then it is undecidable. And uh, uh, so uh, the, the, uh, we need a convenient, uh, weak, un essentially undecidable theories uh, for this to work, which uh, on, on the one hand uh, should be weak enough that uh, uh, they are actually included in uh, whatever uh, essentially undecidable theories we encounter in practice and uh, want to, to use the test on them. And on the other hand, uh, the, the theory should be uh, uh, reasonably simple to uh, to define or to verify that, that it is included in in another theory. Uh, the typical theories that I use for this purpose are Robinson's arithmetic, uh, uh, either the, the arithmetic Q or uh, there is this uh, weaker uh, Robinson's uh, arithmetic R, which is. Uh, 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 weaker than Q, but uh, on the other hand, it's not finitely axiomatizable. So it depends on the circumstances whether it's like, actually uh, easier to use or not. Uh, but uh, uh, both of these theories are convenient uh, when we want to uh, apply them to theories of arithmetic. But uh, they are not so convenient when we have, uh, are dealing with, uh, say, a set theory. So. Uh, uh, we can, of course, uh, interpret some uh, minimal arithmetic in, uh, in set theory and uh, therefore check that it uh, includes, uh, say, Robinson's arithmetic, but uh, this requires some work. And it's uh, uh, in such a context uh, better to have um, uh, a list of uh, known essentially undecidable theories that are directly formulated uh, in the language of set theory. So uh, one convenient uh, uh, theory used for this purpose is this uh, adjunctive set theory. And uh, there is an even uh, weaker set theory uh, that's essentially undecidable. Uh, it was uh, originally described by Vought and uh, well denoted VS. And uh, that's, uh, that will be the subject of, of this talk. So uh, Vought's set theory has uh, the language of set theory, so, so we just have the, the binary uh, element with predicate. And uh, uh, the only axioms of the theory is uh, this infinite schema, which says that uh, for every uh, standard natural number n, uh, uh, every collection of uh, n objects uh, form a set. So we can uh, form uh, an ordered, uh, uh, well, we have the empty set, we can form uh, singletons and uh, 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 two element set, three element sets, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, the, this theory is uh, essentially undecidable. The, the, this was already noted uh, by Vought himself uh, the, 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 that it uh, interprets uh, uh, Robinson's R. Uh, so uh, since it is a, a quite a big theory, we can uh, uh, use it as a, uh, as a convenient uh, uh, theory to check that something is uh, essentially undecidable. But uh, the, it has uh, the kind of a drawback that it is not finitely axiomatizable. So since we are looking for as minimal theory as possible, uh, it would be a natural question whether we can actually make do with a finite fragment of uh, 
both set theories and uh, still be essentially undecidable. Well, uh, it turns out we cannot do that uh, because uh, all the finite fragments of this theory are, uh, are not uh, essentially undecidable. They have uh, decidable uh, extensions. So uh, uh, the, yeah, the, the, these uh, axioms uh, are like linearly ordered in that uh, if we have an element sets, then we have uh, and element sets uh, for all positive and uh, most n. So uh, the basic uh, weak fragments of this uh, what set theory are these theories DSN, uh, whose axioms are uh, just that uh, there exists an empty set and that uh, uh, there exists uh, uh, that every n element uh, form a set. So uh, uh, this theory has a decidable extension and uh, the reason, uh, the known reason for that is uh, kind of indirect, namely that uh, uh, all these theories VSN are interpretable in any uh, theory with pairing. So uh, uh, let me uh, explain that uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, first, uh, what are theories uh, with pairing? So uh, uh, let me just uh, assume that uh, all theories uh, uh, I consider uh, prove that uh, there exist at least two different elements to avoid some uh, corner cases. Then uh, the theory uh, has a uh, pairing function. If, there, if uh, there is a definable function of two arguments uh, with the property that uh, uh, the pair of x, y and uh, the pair of x prime, y prime are equal only if uh, x equals x prime and uh, y equals y prime. We can also uh, consider uh, uh, pairing functions that are not actually functions, but uh, that there may be uh, uh, more uh, different pairs uh, for, for the same two elements x, y, so to speak. So, uh, uh, so if there is a non-functional pairing, if there is a ternary formula like this, uh, uh, so that the theory on the one hand proves that uh, uh, for every x and y, uh, there is uh, an element that uh, makes a pair of x and y. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, again the principle that uh, uh, a pair of x and y and a pair of x prime y prime can be the same only if uh, x equals x prime and y equals y prime. Uh, as an example, uh, the fragments uh, VSN that we have just defined uh, uh, have a non functional pairing uh, if uh, n is at least two. Uh, we may just use uh, the Kuratowski pairing uh, as here. Um, so so uh, this notation here is uh, kind of deceptive. This looks like I just defined a pairing function, but uh, uh, since uh, this VS2 actually doesn't include the axiom of extensionality, uh, uh, these, uh, there may be many sets uh, that are a singleton of X and many sets that are a pair of X and Y and so on. So this notation actually uh, may denote uh, uh, many different sets, so that's why it's a non-functional pairing. And uh, uh, there is a nice uh, paper by Albert uh, uh, that uh, discusses uh, theories with uh, pairs and uh, uh, sequences and uh, all uh, kinds of other uh, containers like this. So uh, you can uh, look there for uh, for more background. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, so uh, the, if a theory has uh, encoding of uh, sequences, not, not just pairs, but uh, sequences of variable length, uh, so these are the so-called sequential theories, then it is well known that uh, such theories uh, interpret Robinson arithmetic, and therefore uh, they are essentially undecidable. So it uh, may uh, come as a bit of a surprise that uh, uh, if you just uh, require a theory to have a, a pairing function, then uh, then it may be decidable. Uh, the, the basic examples of such theories were constructed by Maltsev uh, in a series of two papers uh, where he uh, defined the so-called theories of locally free algebras. So uh, basically you can, uh, uh, you should think about them as uh, the first order theory is uh, satisfied by the free algebras in a given signature. So uh, you look at the, the algebra of terms uh, the, in a given, say, finite signature, and uh, the, 
the first order theory is uh, satisfied by, by such free algebras, uh, are the so called uh, theories of locally free algebras. And uh, uh, actually, also uh, discusses this uh, generalization of, of this, where the algebras are not uh, completely free, but uh, we can impose a kind of commutative constraints. So, uh, in the ba basic case where we have a, a binary function, we can uh, also ask uh, at a free uh, commutative uh, uh, algebra. And uh, if you have uh, more functions with uh, larger arities, then we can impose a, a kind of a group of permutations uh, uh, acting on uh, the variables of, of the function. Uh, as a special case of these locally free algebras, um, uh, uh, we have the so-called acyclic pairing functions, which are basically just uh, uh, the locally free algebras in a signature with a single uh, binary uh, uh, function. And uh, uh, for example, if you take uh, the structure of uh, natural numbers with uh, uh, this function, 2 to x times uh, uh, th 3 to y, and uh, this is an acyclic pairing function. So, so this is a decidable structure by, by results of Maltzer. Uh, and then uh, these results uh, were uh, generalized by, uh, by Tenney in his uh, PhD thesis, uh, where he uh, considered uh, uh, pairing functions that are uh, not uh, quite acyclic, but uh, acyclic up, up to a few exceptions. Um, so uh, say that there are uh, finitely many exceptions to, to a cyclicity of the pairing function or, or that uh, the exceptions are somehow well behaved uh, in some technical sense. And uh, uh, this all allowed him to, to prove that uh, uh, the theories of uh, various uh, pairing functions that uh, one uh, considers in practice are decidable. So for example, we can take uh, this pairing functions here. So, so this is actually a bijective pair pairing function. Um, um, here's a, uh, another pairing function. The, this one is not bijective. The, the third one here is uh, the well-known uh, Cantor pairing function. So all, all these are decidable by uh, results of Tenney. And uh, so uh, uh, these two results were uh, just uh, about structures that just uh, have a pairing function. But uh, uh, it turns out uh, we can even have uh, uh, integers uh, with a bit more uh, arithmetical structure and the pairing function that are still decidable. Uh, one example uh, uh, follows from uh, this result of uh, Simeonov, uh, which says that uh, natural numbers with addition and uh, the uh, exponential function is a decidable structure. And uh, in this structure, we can define uh, some pairing functions such as uh, this one here, 2 to x plus 2 to x plus y. So uh, this is observed uh, in this paper by Sejelsky and Richard, that, that we can define pairing uh, functions in this structure. Um, and uh, Sejelsky and Richard uh, uh, themselves uh, uh, prove a uh, 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 surprising result that uh, the, if we take uh, the natural numbers uh, uh, with the uh, Cantor pairing function, then it, it remains decidable even if we had the successor. Uh, whereas uh, if we further expand this structure with uh, addition or ordering, then, then, then it's already uh, undecidable. So uh, this is a very intriguing result. Now, uh, uh, to get back uh, to about set theory, if you have a pairing function, then uh, we can interpret uh, uh, this uh, uh, fragment VSK of what set theory as follows. Uh, well, the, in the most straightforward way, the, essentially, uh, if we have pairs, we can encode k tuples by just uh, stacking uh, k minus one also of these pairs on top of each other. And then uh, we can simply encode uh, k element sets uh, by, by these k tuples. So we say that uh, something um, uh, that uh, uh, this, uh, this k tuple uh, encodes a set of uh, x0, x1 up to x uh, k minus 1. So we formally uh, we define a, an element with predicate such that uh, x is a member of y if and only if y is a, a k tuple 
uh, of elements, one of which is uh, X. And uh, the, uh, this uh, the, will satisfy the, the, the axiom uh, VK saying that uh, there exists uh, unordered K tuples. And uh, if uh, the pairing function is non-surjective, then they will also satisfy the existence of an empty set. So, so it's uh, uh, an interpretation of VSK. Uh, if the pairing function is surjective, then uh, the, we have to fix it up a, a bit, but uh, uh, this is uh, easily done as well. And uh, we don't need a pairing function. Uh, uh, I wrote it here just uh, to make the notation suggestive, but uh, the same thing works uh, with non-functional pairing as well. So we get that uh, any theory with, with pairing interprets uh, all these finite fragments DSK. And in particular, uh, if we start with a, a decidable theory of pairing, then uh, the, uh, the, uh, this means that uh, there exists a decidable extension of, uh, of this DSK. Yeah, so, uh, so that's uh, written here, here as a corollary. Uh, the, all these fragments of ESK have uh, decidable completions. Uh, there is uh, one um, uh, annoying thing uh, uh, about this argument, namely that uh, uh, the extensions of PSK we get uh, in this way are quite opaque and uh, the, they are very unnatural uh, if you really think of them as theories of sets. To, to begin with, uh, the extensionality will fail badly because, for example, uh, the ordered pairs xy and yx are different pairs, but they will represent the same set and so on. So uh, uh, we can formulate a kind of informal problem to find a natural uh, uh, decidable extension of, of uh, the SK. Uh, that somehow has a transparent meaning uh, in a sense that we can really think about these as, as sets and uh, in some sort of a meaningful way. Uh, uh, so uh, one way to get uh, such an extension is to, to consider a particular model of uh, uh, VSK and uh, look at its complete theory. So uh, uh, we get a natural model of VSK by considering these uh, hereditarily bounded sets, so sets hereditarily of size at most k, uh, the, after which uh, I named the talk. So, uh, so what are these? So first, uh, uh, there is this uh, well-known class of hereditarily finite sets. Uh, so now we work uh, in some uh, usual set theory like ZF or ZFC. Uh, so let me just recall that uh, the set of hereditarily finite sets, which is usually de denoted H omega, uh, can be defined in uh, several equivalent ways. So uh, uh, one of them is that it's uh, the smallest set with the property that uh, every finite subset uh, is an element. Uh, uh, it is in fact a unique set uh, that uh, has the stronger property that dissolves if and only if that uh, an element X uh, uh, belongs to H omega if and only if it is finite and it is a subset of H omega. So that, uh, one can prove in that if that there exists a unique set with this property and uh, this is this set uh, H omega. An explicit description uh, is provided here uh, set is hereditarily finite if its transitive closure is finite, or equivalently, if uh, every set uh, in the transitive closure of its singleton is finite. Uh, so uh, the transitive closure is the smallest transitive set that uh, includes a given set, uh, and it can be defined uh, as here as, uh, as a union of, uh, uh, of these inductively defined sets. So. Uh, uh, we start with uh, this set X, then in the next steps, uh, we take uh, the, what we have and uh, we add all elements of, of that. And uh, if we iterate this process, then the, the union, of, uh, union of all these stages is a uh, uh, transitive closure of X. Uh, oh, oh, and the, the, finally, the, there is this uh, uh, Fourth way of uh, defining a set of hereditarily finite sets, which is uh, by, uh, using this uh, uh, cumulative hierarchy. Uh, so, uh, 
this is just the, the omega uh, level of uh, the cumulative hierarchy. So we start with the empty set as uh, the, the zeroth level. Then in the next le level, we take uh, the power set and we iterate this and uh, the union of uh, the first omega stages of uh, uh, this hierarchy is uh, again this uh, sort of very, very finite set. Uh, now, uh, the, the structure of hereditarily finite sets is uh, heavily undecidable. It's uh, well known to be bi interpretable with the standard model of arithmetic. This is uh, an old result that goes back to Ackermann. Uh, so what we look uh, at instead is that uh, we don't take uh, uh, like all finite sets, but we only look at uh, sets of size at most k. So uh, we define the set hk of sets hereditarily of size at most k. Uh, again, we can uh, define it in several equivalent ways. Uh, uh, the basic way is that uh, it is the smallest set with the property that uh, every subset of HK that has size at most K is also an element of K. And again, uh, there in fact exists a unique such a set if we impose uh, the, the, the converse implication as well. Uh, we can define it uh, explicitly using transitive closures so that uh, X is hereditarily of size at most K. If and only if every element of the transitive closure of singleton X has size at most K. We can uh, also uh, uh, define it uh, like here uh, with a sort of uh, cumulative uh, hierarchy restricted to the, the uh, power sets uh, where you only take subset of size k instead of full power sets. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so I hope that the, uh, the definition is clear that uh, this is a natural collection of sets. Uh, the H omega is uh, just the union of uh, these uh, sets hk for all k. And now uh, this structure HK is a natural model of VSK because uh, uh, basically the, the, we define it in such a way that uh, uh, it is closed under the formation of um, uh, unordered K tuples. Uh, so, uh, so it is a model of VSK and uh, the, it is in fact a, a minimal model of VSK in, in the sense that uh, HK embeds uh, as a transitive submodel in an, any model of VSK. So, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, now the question is, uh, uh, what is the theory of this structure? And in particular, is it decidable? So if it is decidable, then uh, we get a fairly natural, uh, complete extension of uh, VSK. Uh, so uh, first, uh, what is all, what was already known? Uh, so let us look at some easy cases. So, uh, well, the, the first case is really the degenerate case. I, I would say if you take k equals zero, then this H zero is simply a one element structure that just contains the empty set. So uh, uh, that's boring. Uh, if you look at uh, k equals one, then H one consists of uh, the empty set, the singleton of the empty set, and so on. We, ju we just uh, keep adding uh, iterated singletons. So, uh, you can see that uh, this structure is isomorphic to natural numbers with uh, a graph of the successor operation. This theory is decidable, it's well known. Uh, it is in fact p-space complete and it has all kinds of nice properties. Uh, so it is quantifier elimination in a language where we have zero and successor as a function. So in terms of uh, this language here, if we have a constant for empty set and the singleton as a function symbol. The theory is uh, strongly minimal, it's un uncountably categorical, uh, so it's really well understood. Uh, it turns out that uh, uh, also the, uh, the case uh, k equals two is known from the literature, although uh, now, now the theory already has pairing and it's uh, uh, kind of complicated. So uh, the, the structure H2 is uh, def definitionally equivalent to uh, uh, the structure where, where instead of uh, the elemental predicate, we have a, a constant for the empty set and uh, a binary function symbol for, for unordered pairs. And uh, uh, this structure is decidable by uh, the results of Maltzev that I mentioned, because it's uh, in fact a free commutative uh, uh, algebra. 
So uh, we know that it is decidable. There is uh, some form of quantifier elimination. Uh, the theory uh, also turns out to be stable. But uh, uh, if you take uh, a k uh, uh, equal three or more, then uh, these results of Maltsev uh, uh, no longer apply uh, because uh, basically this uh, set builder operation has uh, various symmetries that uh, are not captured by just permutation of arguments. So uh, uh, in particular, uh, the set of uh, X, X and Y is the same as the sex set from, from X, Y and Y, but uh, we cannot get uh, the left-hand side from the right-hand side by, by just permuting the, the arguments uh, because we have a, a different number of each of them. So, uh, we have to do uh, some actual work. So uh, this will be the, the content of, uh, of the rest of the talk. Uh, I will give uh, an ex explicit uh, axiom system, SK, uh, that will turn out to uh, uh, capture the uh, complete theory of HK. Uh, I will uh, prove a, a kind of a combinatorial characterization of elementary equivalence of finite tuples uh, in models of this theory. And uh, this will lead to a proof of uh, completeness of the theory uh, and of its decidability. Uh, we will see that uh, it has uh, iterated exponential computational complexity. And uh, there is a kind of uh, quantifier elimination result. So uh, without further ado, uh, here is uh, the axiom system. So uh, we have the, uh, the axioms of uh, the SK. So these uh, two axioms that says that, that uh, there exists an empty set and uh, for every k couple of elements, we can form uh, the set uh, formed by them. Uh, then we have the extensionality axiom. We have uh, this boundedness axiom that uh, simply says that uh, all sets have at most k elements. And finally, we have uh, this axiom schema, schema which says that uh, the element root uh, predicate is acyclic. Um, there are no finite cycles. So uh, this acyclicity is basically a version of uh, the axiom of foundation, but uh, it turns out that uh, the, the, this is all we need to, to to, to formulate uh, uh, a foundation uh, in this uh, 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 rest restricted uh, the structure so that, uh, so that it becomes complete. And uh, uh, we can actually prove uh, the full schema of uh, epsilon induction or whatever in, in this structure, uh, in this theory uh, by, by its completeness. But uh, uh, we'll get to, to the completeness of the, of the theory only later. So, so these are the axioms. Uh, so I hope that uh, they have a clear and uh, intuitive meaning. And uh, our basic goal is to prove that uh, the theory is complete. This will uh, imply that it is uh, the complete theory of HK of the structure HK, and uh, and that it is decidable. And uh, we'll prove the completeness of SK using an Ehrenfeucht Fraser argument. So. Uh, we will uh, describe uh, in a certain way the, the elementary equivalence of finite tuples in uh, models of SK. And uh, if you now then apply the, uh, this description to, to empty tuples A and B, this will uh, imply that all, uh, every two models of the theory are in fact elementary equivalent and therefore then the theory is complete. So uh, here is just a brief reminder. Uh, uh, the quantifier rank of, of a formula is uh, the maximum nesting of uh, quantifiers in the formula. So it can be uh, defined as in this uh, inductive way that uh, atomic formulas have uh, rank zero uh, and uh, uh, connectives uh, uh, do not uh, raise rank and uh, quantifiers uh, raise rank uh, by one. And then uh, if you have uh, uh, two structures uh, and two finite tuples in each of them uh, that have the same length, then uh, we, we say that these two tuples are elementary equivalent if they satisfy the, the same formulas, and they are n equivalent if they satisfy the same formulas of uh, rank at most n. And 
Now, uh, if we have the two structures like this, uh, we can define the n round uh, Aaron Voigt uh, Freise game uh, on A and B. Uh, in this game, we have uh, two players, uh, spoiler and duplicator. Uh, the game is uh, played uh, in n rounds, and in each round, uh, first the spoiler chooses an element of uh, one of the two structures. Uh, it's up to him whether he chooses an element of A or, or an element of B. And the duplicator has to respond uh, with an element uh, in the other structure. So if spoiler chooses an element of A, duplicator has to choose an element of B, and vice versa. So, so in this way, we uh, in round i, we choose uh, element uh, alpha i in A and uh, an element beta i in B. And then uh, uh, after the n rounds, uh, duplicator wins if and only if uh, uh, the map which maps uh, each alpha i to, to the corresponding beta i is a partial isomorphism, meaning that, uh, uh, that it is an uh, injective function that uh, preserves uh, atomic uh, formulas uh, uh, in both ways. And then uh, uh, more generally, if we have, uh, uh, again, so finite tuples uh, uh, selected in, in each of these structures that have the same length, then uh, the, the say, uh, we can define the iron for try say games uh, 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 for the models with these uh, uh, pointed uh, tuples in the same way, except that uh, uh, when we check uh, the, the winning condition, the partial isomorphism also has to include uh, the original tuples. So, um, so I hope uh, this is all well known. Uh, the, the main theorem here is that uh, uh, two tuples are an equivalent if and only if the duplicator has a winning strategy in the end round uh, uh, around for try say games uh, play uh, on, on these tuples. And uh, we can also formulate it uh, 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 in a way that uh, doesn't explicitly mention games and, and, and strategies and so on uh, in the following way. So uh, we define a graded back and forth system for the, the structures A and B uh, as a system of uh, relations En uh, for all natural numbers N, uh, where the, the relations are uh, between finite tuples, uh, one, one in A and one in B, and the tuples are the same length. And the, the relations uh, have uh, these two properties that uh, first, uh, if a tuple A is uh, in uh, any of these relations uh, with a tuple B, then uh, the, the correspondence that maps each element of, the, uh, of A to, to the corresponding element of B is a partial isomorphism. And uh, we have this uh, back and forth condition that if uh, tuple A is in the n plus one's relation with tuple B, then uh, whenever we extend it, uh, extend the tuple with uh, another element of A, we can uh, find uh, an extension of uh, the tuple on the other side so that uh, the extended tuples are in the nth relation and, uh, and uh, vice versa. So, if you extend the, the B tuple with an element of uh, B, uh, then we can find the corresponding element in A uh, so, that, so that this is an EN. And uh, the corollary of uh, this uh, Aaron Foyt and Freisai theorem is that if you have uh, such a graded back and forth system, then uh, whatever the two tuples are in this EN relation, then they're actually an equivalent. So uh, we will uh, define a particular uh, uh, graded back and forth system. And it will be uh, defined in terms of uh, transitive closures uh, constructed uh, inside the models of, uh, of this uh, SK theory. So uh, if you have a model of SK uh, and a finite tuple in this model of, of length L, then uh, we define the uh, transitive closure of this tuple as a subset of uh, the domain of the model. And uh, the, in fact, uh, we also define these individual, individual levels uh, of the transitive closure. So for any n uh, in omega, we define this TCN uh, by this uh, induction. So the zeroth level of the transitive closure is just a set of uh, elements uh, in the tuple. 
And then the n plus one level consists of uh, the nth level together with all elements uh, of uh, elements of this nth level uh, in terms of uh, uh, the elemental predicate of, of the structure. And uh, the whole transitive closure is just the, the union of all the levels. Uh, now, uh, an important thing here is that uh, all these levels TCN are finite as a consequence of the fact that uh, all of uh, the boundedness axiom, basically, that uh, all uh, every uh, uh, element uh, in the structure has at most k, uh, k elements uh, in the sense of A. Uh, so we can place this explicit bound uh, that uh, the size of TCN of A is uh, at most L times K2 at most N, where the, the, this notation simply means uh, this sum of uh, K to I for all I up to N, which can be explicitly uh, defined by, by this kind of a formula. And uh, we consider the, the transitive closures as uh, not just uh, subsets of A, but uh, also as uh, structures in their own right uh, in this way. So the structure includes uh, the restriction of uh, the induced elemental predicate for, from the ambient structure A. And uh, it also includes uh, the elements of the original tuples constants. And then uh, we define that uh, two tuples are, say, similar if uh, their transitive closures are isomorphic. And more, more generally, uh, they are uh, n similar if uh, the, the nth levels of uh, their transitive closures are, are isomorphic. Uh, of course, uh, the, if two tuples are similar, then, then they are n similar uh, for every n. Uh, it's not, not quite obvious, maybe on, on the first side, but uh, the converse also holds. Uh, uh, this can be proved uh, using Koenig's lemma, using the fact that all these TCNs are finite. So the, the, the similarity relation is just the intersection of uh, these n similarity relations over all n. And uh, it's also uh, uh, very easy to see from the finiteness of these transitive closures that uh, they are definable uh, in the following sense that uh, if we uh, fix uh, a model of SK and a tuple and uh, uh, a number N, and there is a formula phi A N uh, with the property that uh, if you take uh, another model of SK and, and the tuple of the same length, and this satisfies this formula if and only if uh, uh, the, these two tuples are n, n similar. So the, if and only the, the, the nth level of the transitive closure of B is isomorphic to uh, the nth level of transitive closure of A. And uh, uh, moreover, we can take this formula to be a Boolean combination of uh, bounded existential formulas uh, and we can uh, count the, the quantifier rank of the formula uh, again using the bound on the size of uh, TCM. Uh, here, uh, recall that the formula is bounded if everyone has bounded quantifiers, where a bounded existential quantifier is uh, uh, introduced like this. Uh, then, using this definability, it's, uh, it follows uh, the, the immediately that. Uh, uh, whenever two tuples are elementary equivalent, uh, then they are similar, they have isomorphic transitive closures. And uh, more precisely, if they are uh, M equi equivalent, where M is uh, the, this uh, uh, expression here, then they are uh, N similar. And uh, uh, we want to have a kind of converse uh, to this property as well, but uh, uh, this is more difficult to prove, and uh, here is where we uh, use uh, an Ehrenfeucht phrase uh, argument uh, rather than showing it directly. So the main te technical uh, part of the argument is uh, the following lemma, which uh, uh, describes the back and forth uh, condition uh, of, of a graded back and forth system, basically. And it says that uh, uh, if you have two, two tuples in the models of SK that are uh, M similar for M being uh, the, this expression here, which is exponentially in N, then uh, 
whenever we extend one of the tuples uh, with a new element, we can find uh, a matching element in the other model so that uh, the resulting tuples are n minus one similar. So uh, the, the reason I'm just uh, writing it like this is that uh, I don't want to, to have the complicated uh, to have this expression even more complicated as is. So instead of writing k to at most n plus one plus n plus one, um, uh, making uh, uh, here uh, n minus one uh, instead of n. But uh, yeah, so uh, so this is the the, the kind of the main uh, uh, technical uh, part of the proof. And then, uh, then by using the the Arinfoich uh, Fraser theorem, uh, we obtain the, the, the following characterization: that uh, uh, first of all, uh, if you have two tuples of the same length uh, in two models of SK, then they are elementary equivalent if and only if uh, their transitive closures are isomorphic. And moreover, we have uh, the, the, this kind of uh, explicit uh, relationship uh, that described the, uh, uh, the implications between the, between the uh, and similarity and uh, an equivalence. So uh, so the, the, this is just the implication that we've seen earlier. Uh, the, the, uh, this is the, the new one that, that comes uh, from the Aaron Foist price argument. It says that if uh, A and B are uh, Tk and similar than they are an equivalent where Tkn is a, a function defined uh, like this. Uh, in this uh, uh, inductive fashion that uh, Tkn plus one is a kind of exponential in this uh, Tkn. Now uh, we can uh, infer uh, all the basic properties so of the theory the, the, that we wanted. So first, uh, uh, if you apply the criterion to, to the empty tuples, then the transitive closure of the empty tuple is just the empty set into a, uh, empty structures are isomorphic. So we immediately get that uh, uh, the two models of SK are uh, elementary equivalent. So the theory SK is complete. And uh, therefore, uh, it just coincides uh, with the theory of uh, the structure uh, of uh, sets hereditarily of size at most k. Uh, moreover, uh, since this is a recursively axiomatizable complete theory, uh, we immediately get uh, that it is decidable. So uh, now we got a, a natural uh, uh, decidable extension uh, of uh, VSK, which is uh, the main uh, result that, that we were after. Uh, we can also infer some, some further properties of, uh, uh, of SK. So first of all, uh, 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 exploiting the, the fact that uh, uh, we have uh, defined this uh, uh, similarity in terms of uh, these uh, Boolean combinations of bounded existential formulas, it is uh, uh, not difficult to uh, uh, to show that uh, we have a quantifier elimination result uh, of this form that uh, uh, over the uh, SK, every formula is equivalent to a Boolean combination of uh, bounded existential formulas. And uh, uh, moreover, if you expand the language with uh, 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 these two predicates, so uh, these are simply the graphs uh, of uh, the empty set uh, uh, and the graph of the uh, uh, set builder uh, notation for, for k tuples, uh, then in this expanded language, every formula is equivalent to a bounded existential formula and to a bounded universal formula. So, so uh, these extra predicates have the bounded universal definitions in the original language. Uh, we can also prove that uh, uh, the theory SK is stable. Uh, so the, this matches the, the, the known results uh, about uh, the locally free theories of Maltsev. And uh, it is, uh, in a sense, uh, the best possible uh, what we can get uh, for a theory with pairing, uh, uh, because it's uh, not difficult to see that uh, a theory with pairing is uh, uh, never uh, super stable. Uh, we can also show that uh, SK is uh, not finitely axiomatizable. So uh, uh, 
the axiom system um, uh, we gave, uh, that includes the infinite schema, uh, the acyclicity axioms uh, for every natural number n, uh, cannot be reduced uh, uh, to a finite axiom system. And uh, uh, let me mention a, a, here a problem that, uh, that I learned uh, from Albert Fisser. Uh, whether uh, there exists a consistent finitely axiomatized decidable theory with Perry. So uh, all the examples of uh, 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 decidable uh, theories uh, of pairing uh, are not finitely axiomatizable. So uh, uh, we just constructed another of them, but uh, it's an open problem whether, whether there is a finitely axiomatized uh, such a theory. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, uh, we have shown that uh, the theory is decidable, but uh, the argument uh, uh, didn't uh, yield an explicit bound uh, on the computational complexity. Uh, but uh, we can actually um, um, prove such a bound uh, as well. So uh, first of all, uh, there is a very uh, general uh, lower bound that applies to all theories of pairing, uh, which is proved uh, uh, in the book uh, by Ferrante and Rakov. Uh, and it, uh, it simply says that uh, 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 any consistent theory with pairing requires uh, uh, complexity uh, at least uh, I iterate it uh, exponentially in n. So uh, the, this is the iterated exponential or super exponential uh, function. Uh, it's just a simple notation uh, defined like this. So uh, uh, t2x uh, subscript n is just uh, a tower of, uh, of height n of exponentials uh, with x on top. So uh, so the, the number of top uh, on top doesn't really matter. So I'm just using zero here. Uh, so the important point here is that this is a tower of uh, 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 exponentials uh, whose height is uh, at least linear in N. Uh, I uh, write here that uh, the decision procedure has complexity, uh, at least this number. So uh, what exactly is complexity uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, you can take uh, uh, time complexity, space complexity. Uh, it also doesn't matter whether you uh, consider deterministic uh, algorithms or non-deterministic or randomized or alternating, whatever. Uh, the, the, the point is that uh, uh, all of these measures and uh, all of these uh, uh, machine models are uh, related uh, with each other by uh, with at most an exponential or say doubly exponentials uh, blow up. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this is just disappears uh, when we consider it in context of uh, such a high complexity as here, because this just adds uh, uh, one or two uh, uh, to the height of the exponentials here. So uh, since it's already uh, linear in N, it's just uh, uh, stays linear in N. So it's uh, very robust uh, with respect to the complexity measures. Uh, it's also uh, robust with respect to things like uh, uh, how exactly you measure the size of the formula. So you really take uh, uh, the number of bits required to write down the formula, uh, uh, or whether you just uh, count the number of symbols or, or things like that. And uh, it should be noted that uh, uh, the theories uh, the, with pairing that I mentioned earlier, uh, like uh, theories defined by Malseth and uh, the uh, theories of the basic pairing functions considered by Tenney uh, actually uh, meet uh, this bound that uh, there is a corresponding upper bound of, of this complexity. So uh, anyway, uh, the, the special case of, uh, of this theorem of Ferrante and Rakov is that any decision procedure for a consistent extension of uh, Vs2 has uh, this at least uh, the iterated exponential complexity. And uh, we can prove that uh, uh, matching upper bounds so, of uh, these theories SK have uh, complexity, uh, uh, which is uh, very high, but, but it's uh, as uh, small as possible uh, in view of the fact that uh, these theories uh, have pairing. 
So uh, uh, first of all, the, the, recall this uh, function tk, uh, and I had uh, uh, here in this characterization of elementary equivalence, it was uh, defined uh, inductively like this. So uh, this is a kind of, a kind of uh, complicated looking formula, but uh, basically uh, uh, each step of this iteration is uh, that we are taking exponential uh, base k. Uh, so uh, the function here uh, is more or less uh, iterated exponentially in n. Uh, we can uh, make this uh, precise that uh, there is a constant ck depending on k and uh, it can be the explicitly described in, in terms of uh, k, but I'm just, uh, I'm not writing the expression here because it's not important, uh, such that this tkn is bounded by uh, n times iterated exponential uh, with uh, exponent ck. And then uh, uh, we can somehow uh, build up on the rn tracer argument to, to turn it into an algorithm. Uh, and we get that uh, this theory sk is decidable in iterated exponential time uh, in terms of n. So uh, this uh, uh, again matches the, uh, the lower bound up to the value of gamma. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the lower bound only applies to uh, when k is at least two because uh, that's when these uh, theories are pairing. So, uh, for the, the simple or degenerate cases, uh, in case zero or one, uh, we already know that S1 is p-space complete uh, because it's just the integers of the successor basically. And uh, as a zero is just uh, the theory of uh, one element structure, which is the same as propositional logic. So it's uh, uh, complete for uniform and C1, but uh, this is not important. Uh, so, uh, for k at least two, this uh, result uh, matches the, the lower bound for theories with pairing, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the, this uh, theorem uh, overestimates uh, the complexity uh, for formulas that have uh, only a small number of quantifier alternations. Uh, the, 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 the upper bound here is only tight. Uh, uh, what do we just uh, um, consider the, the length of the formula as uh, the only measure. And uh, in particular, the, the, the uh, matching lower bound applies to formulas that have uh, uh, quantifier complexity that's also roughly linear in N. Uh, if you look at formulas that have a small, smaller number of uh, quantifier alternations, then we can actually do better. So, uh, uh, one can improve the, the algorithm as follows by uh, basically uh, redoing uh, the rn foix uh, argument in such a way that we consider blocks of quantifiers uh, the, uh, in, in one go. So then uh, uh, we have the following bound on the complexity of, of the theory. If you have a, a sentence uh, phi, which is in ER, so it is uh, R minus one uh, alternations of uh, quantifier blocks, starting with an existential block. Uh, it has uh, length N and uh, the maximum uh, length of a quantifier block is Q. And we can decide whether, whether it's uh, decidable in SK in, uh, well, here are three cases depending on what exactly is R. So you don't have to study the expression in detail, but the important one uh, is the last one, I guess. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, non-deterministic time uh, with this bound. Uh, uh, it's an iterated uh, exponential where the height of the exponentials is uh, R minus one. So, so if, if the formula is, exists uh, R, then uh, we have R minus one exponentials. In the exponent, we have something that uh, uh, depends on uh, the, the length of the, the quantifier blocks. And uh, we also have a factor depending on uh, the length of the formula itself. Uh, uh, 
in particular, uh, if you just look at existential sentences, then uh, this is decidable in, uh, non in NP, uh, non-deterministic polynomial time. Uh, in this case, uh, R equals two here is, needs to be separated out because just the exponent here is uh, not quite QK log K, but you get something like log QK. So that's why it is written here separately, but uh, basically the, the important uh, uh, relationship is given by uh, by, by this uh, third line. So uh, uh, this is the summary of, uh, of the results. So we have uh, identified the theory of this of this uh, structure HK as a natural extension of uh, uh, finite fragment VSK of both set theory. Uh, we prove that it is decidable of uh, more or less lowest possible complexity for theories with pairing. Uh, we gave a transparent explicit axiom system for, for the theory. Uh, we gave a combinatorial characterization of elementary equivalence in terms of uh, transitive closures. And uh, uh, we proved the quantifiable elimination result. So uh, that's uh, uh, all from me. Uh, so uh, here are some references uh, uh, to some, some of the results that, uh, that I mentioned uh, uh, in the doc. So thank you.